Hey everybody, Jen here from Resolve Physical Therapy, bringing you another installment of our Wednesday Wisdom. And today I have Michelle Hershey Baker with me, who is a nurse practitioner here in Bend. And today we're gonna be talking about all things related to nutrition. So welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Um, do you wanna give everybody just a short bio of who you are, your qualifications, that type of thing? Sure, so I have been in the medical field now for, man, since 2005. I started out as a nurse and always knew in the back of my head that I wanted to go back to school to be an NP. I had a great NP uh, provider that always just kind of inspired me. So I uh, put myself through school and I did some urgent care as an NP and then I did primary care. But really, my heart has always been functional medicine. So I went ahead and went through some training and um, really it changed my life too mm -hmm. with some of the experiences that I'd been having and so yeah I've been doing functional medicine with kind of an integrative blend since. Okay very nice and so you deal a lot um, like you said in the functional medicine but a lot of it is in the nutrition realm of things so um, when we're talking about nutrition this could be a conversation that could go on for hours because there are so many things to cover oh, so yeah. um, we're barely just going to scratch the surface on things today so mm -hmm. um, the first question that I want to ask is in relation to hydration. Mm -hmm. So I recently read an article that said um, a large majority of us are chronically dehydrated mm -hmm. um, and most of the time we don't even really realize it. So um, what is your perception of the hydration issue? Um, you know, how much should we be drinking and you know, what are ways that we can improve our hydration? Absolutely. So probably one of the biggest things that people really struggle with is they find water boring um, with the inner you know introduction of soda soda has been around for a long time and so people find themselves kind of more interested in things with flavor and so in terms of how much water you should be drinking per day that really does vary on a lot of different factors including kidney function but it's really important because all of our tissues I mean we are a large percentage water mm -hmm. and so when we are dehydrated or not drinking enough liquids and fluids um, our body can't be optimal. It can't do all the healing that it needs to do. It can't produce the energy it needs. And also it's a big, big player in our metabolism and our ability to maintain weight. And so um, one of the biggest things I think people don't realize is how much sugar is in soda. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to mention that, especially that, um, you know, if you take a, just a can of regular Pepsi, it's about 12 teaspoons of sugar. Mm. Um, so if you want to be a little bit of a label reader, um, <laughs> just kind of flip the can over and just know that four grams of sugar is one teaspoon. So when you look at the cans, you can really see. And sugar is a, is a big inflammatory thing. Our body is not made to break it down. And mm -hmm. of course, it tends to cause a lot of issues. But um, hydration, you know, I would say if you're a 140 pound woman, I would try to get at least 70 ounces. And there are some really good brands out there now that are good tasting electrolytes. So you can just kind of throw a little bit in there and just, you know, whatever, you know, drinking sun tea, mm -hmm. um, you can drink decaf sun tea, things with flavor other than typical sodas. Mm -hmm. um, and you touched a little bit on electrolytes as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do have a very athletic population here in Bend. And so what is your take on drinks such as um, Gatorade and things like that. Because we mm. do know while you do get the electrolytes in Gatorade, it's also at the cost of sugar as well. Mm -hmm. So do you recommend athletes are consuming that or what is your take on that as well? Um, I, you know, Gatorade does have a significant amount of sugar in it. Um, there are definitely, again, that's such a very... Yes, it's a whole different That topic. is an intense <laughs> question actually, but you know, in general, like I'm not talking about your endurance athlete. I'm talking about, hey, I want to go for a mountain bike this weekend and go do something really active, mm -hmm. but how should I just as an average person exercising stay hydrated? Um, we don't really need to load up on sugar. Our body has plenty of sugar stores. Um, you just eating simple fruits and dried fruits on the trail can be really helpful um, for your sugar consumption. And then there's a brand, there's a couple of brands out there that don't have any sugar in them. So one of my favorites is called Ultima mm -hmm. and it doesn't have any chemicals or sugar or anything in it. Even if somebody was say doing a keto diet where they literally don't want any carbs, mm -hmm. you could throw a scoop of that and there's tons of flavors and has a lot of good um, electrolytes in it without the sugar. Okay. Um, so I definitely, you know, I'm not going to tell like an intense athlete how to train, but you know, you're just average weekend warrior, mm -hmm. um, you know, going riding just some basic electrolytes or it's totally okay. fine. You don't need to be drinking Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other question too, and I, th I know this is a realm where you really kind of dive 
um, quite deep into, but is gut health. So mm -hmm. do you want to tell people, you know, what the premise of gut health is and how you address that too? Oh yes, huge topic too. I mean, so a large part of our immune system is in our gut. Um, our mood receptors, you know, 80 to 90% of our serotonin receptors, which is our mood boosting hormones, um, those receptors live in our gut. And so when we eat foods that are inflammatory, high sugar diets, processed, difficult to digest, um, having unknown allergies or sensitivities to foods and unknowingly putting those into your body, um, our gut can't function properly and we can actually develop autoimmune conditions as a result of our gut having issues. And so our gut is one of our biggest barrier systems. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have our skin, you know, we, our lungs, our sinuses, mucous membranes, but our gut is just, it's so important. It mm -hmm. is literally one of our biggest protections. And it fights really hard mm -hmm. um, to keep us healthy. And it battles every day, lots of things. Yes. And our gut is just so important okay. when it comes to overall health. And so when you're talking about overall health, and I want to approach this a little bit from maybe like the rehab perspective of mm -hmm. somebody who is, you know, either like a post-op patient or uh, knows that they have to go in for a type of procedure too, is how would you um, educate somebody to kind of be more proactive versus reactive? I think, mm -hmm. unfortunately, in healthcare, a lot of what we do is reactive to situations versus you know, preventing them from happening. So mm -hmm. in terms of somebody who may be going in for, you know, like, like a, a shoulder surgery or a knee replacement, things like that, how would you recommend that they maybe improve their diet prior to surgery to help with their outcome after? Absolutely, so it sounds like you're talking more like elective surgeries yeah. where you have some time to mm -hmm. prep, absolutely. Correct. So um, just knowing that surgery is a big stressor on the body, even in the best of circumstances. Mm -hmm. So um, your body's gonna have to also process a lot of the medications and the anesthesia. So really just um, preparing to um, provide yourself with a high nutrient diet ahead of time, plenty of protein, um, and knowing that during high stress times, and honestly, our world is fairly stressful even under the best of circumstances. Yes. So then when you throw surgery into that, you just know that your body's gonna need more. So making sure you're taking a good quality multivitamin is really important. And I would recommend getting, um, getting that from a store or a supplement store where you know that it's you know third party tested and mm -hmm. it isn't from Amazon because unfortunately, as much as we all love Amazon, <laughs> I love Very Amazon. Um, it just, you know, they've had to admit there's been some counterfeit issues. So just knowing where your yeah. supplements are coming from and um, being prepared to um, stress, you know, less, so to speak, through the whole thing. So um, optimizing your nutrition before, maybe seeing a nutritionist could be really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and then having your team picked out is always helpful too, because okay. post-op, you know, knowing yeah. that you're going to have some peop other people involved, mm -hmm. just kind of having the stress kind of removed as much as possible and giving yourself good quality multivitamin and uh, nutrition is okay. huge. And I know as PTs, we do get um, some education on diet, nutrition, that type of thing. Um, obviously you are well more versed in this than we are. So I think a common question that we get, or I should say a common issue we see is especially post-operatively, patients are taking a lot of new medications, <clears throat> pain medications that they're not used to taking. Um, we see a really high incidence in loss of appetite. Mm -hmm. So how would you address that with somebody who typically is a good eater, but maybe just doesn't have that appetite, you know, post-surgery as well? Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, for the first few days while your body's just kind of experiencing all the changes in the stress, you know, not eating a ton that first few days post-op, not as big deal. I would really focus on hydration during that time. Mm -hmm. Um, and also just things that would be the easiest to digest and give you the most bang for your buck. So sometimes um, good protein shakes can be helpful. Okay. Um, so you're at least giving your body the proteins that it needs to, um, to repair tissue. And also, honestly, cliche, but chicken soup. I mean, bone <laughs> broth is huge. Okay. Um, if you, you can buy literally organic bone broth in the stores now, you don't have to make it yourself. But if you were to make it yourself, mm -hmm. um, all of that good collagen and those reparative proteins, um, if you're not feeling a meal, could be so easy to just, you know, drink that, sip that bone broth and get some really quality nutrients okay. in. Okay, good. Um, and the other thing we know too is, um, especially in the PT realm of things, is we see a lot of patients with chronic pain. Mm -hmm. And you know, as research has come out over the years, we know that diet and nutrition plays a huge role in, in managing chronic pain. So, um, you know, specific diagnoses such as like OA, fibromyalgia, those types mm -hmm. of things. So, um, 
how important is nutrition or what are the, the avenues that you would recommend to people who are dealing with chronic pain? Um, how would you, uh, you know, recommend them to take a look at their diet or what they're consuming? Yeah, for sure. That's a, I mean, that's a huge question because chronic pain is, is something that a lot of people suffer from. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the difference with when you're talking to a functional medicine provider versus a traditionally trained, and I've been trained both, so I understand the perspective of both. Um, but when somebody is dealing with chronic pain, we don't just go, okay, your knee hurts, well then your pain is originating in your knee. Mm -hmm. We try to dial back further and go, well, why is your, in your knee inflamed and where is that inflammation coming from? Mm -hmm. And again, nutrition and your gut health plays a huge role. Um, and so when your body is um, having foods that inflame it, just either it's not the right kind of foods for you or you're having something highly processed, highly processed, higher sugar foods, really so many toxins that our body then has to deal with. And over time, our body can't, you know, mm -hmm. it's not a perfect machine. And so eventually that inflammation just becomes very widespread. Um, now that's, you know, I'm not, I don't want people to think that just because you have chronic pain, it means you eat poorly. Cause there's some really unbelievably healthy eaters that still struggle with chronic mm -hmm. pain. And so knowing again, how to eat for your body type and how certain foods affect you. Cause not every um, food that you put into your mouth is going to affect digestion. People mm -hmm. automatically assume it affects digestion only. Um, but it can present in many different ways. So for instance, somebody who has migraines, there could be many causes of the migraine. Mm -hmm. um, so again, dialing back and looking a little bit deeper into where that inflammation is, is being triggered from okay. is huge. And then you kind of touched on it a little bit as well um, in you know different types of diets and things like that. So one of the things that we kind of commonly see come about are these quote unquote fad diets that mm -hmm. are you know the latest and greatest thing to to you know boost strength and your energy and lose weight and all these things. And so uh, you know and it's again one of those situations where they're not meant for everybody. Absolutely. So what is your take on um, fad diets and how we approach that? Absolutely. So. Fad diets, um, you know, there's a few that we could list specifically that are really on hot buttons, but just in general, when somebody is considered a very, very big diet change, it's always important to talk with your healthcare provider. Um, there are certain diets out there, especially I'll just name keto as one, mm -hmm. that literally originate as a therapeutic diet for children who are having seizures. Um, and so, of course, it promotes weight loss. Um, and so a lot of people have jumped on the, on the train with that. The issue though is um, you don't know what your liver is doing, how mm -hmm. it's going to handle all that fat. Mm -hmm. um, you don't know what your kidneys are doing and how it's going to handle all the ketones. Um, and so, you know, in general, when you're talking about making a big change, um, <clears throat> knowing how to transition safely if it's the right eating plan for you is one thing because mm -hmm. you don't want to just slam your body with a complete different thing. We actually have good three to five pounds of good gut bacteria in our body that helps us digest properly. And so, if it's used to eating one way and then you slam it with a totally different diet, you're gonna have digestive upset because that bacteria doesn't know how to handle that food change. Okay. And so meeting with um, with your healthcare provider, getting some basic screening labs and also discussing your overall health. Somebody who's in a very stressful time of their life and is struggling with energy or hormone issues can really make themselves quite sick, literally sick by trying to make a dietary change that's not the right thing for them. Mm -hmm. And so it is not, when you're changing and going into such a therapeutic way of eating, um, you have to be to know that that's what's right for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think that's the big thing too. Is you know, based on your age, your gender, your activity level. Absolutely. Um, you know, any previous health injuries or you know things that you're recovering from, um, what types of prescription medications that you're taking. We all yeah. know that affects the, your diet and you know the types of nutrients that you need. So, um, if you had to have like three takeaway things for, you mm -hmm. know, just um, be the average person who is just curious about the importance of nutrition. Like, what are yeah. the three things that you would want people to know about nutrition? Um, that it is really important to do organic as much as possible. Okay. Um, so especially when it comes to like your meats um, and um, foods that you're going to eat a lot of, um, mm -hmm. those things you're definitely going to want to do organic as much as possible just because of the chemicals. Um, and the hormones involved in the meat and also on the produce can really disrupt and fill your body with a lot of toxins and make it difficult to process. Mm -hmm. um, so making sure you're doing like grass fed, you know, grass fed organic um, as much as possible is huge. Um, also do be a little bit of a label reader. 
um, in terms of reading what's in something. So just because it says natural and you know healthy, mm -hmm. yeah, um, healthy option or low fat, you know, low fat is another way of saying more sugar because the flavor mm -hmm. comes from Absolutely. something. Yeah. <laughs> so just being a little bit of a label reader okay. and don't take um, don't take the box label word for it, you know, or front of the box look into it, you know, mm -hmm. trying to avoid the processed foods as much as possible because mm -hmm. your body will be able to break down the diet, you know, the, the nutrients better and something that's more of a whole food. Whole mm -hmm. food meaning something that's not processed and okay. not boxed. Okay. And then, um, you know, again, just avoiding the sugars, mm -hmm. the processed sugars. And, uh, you know, I'll be the first person to admit, I love food and I love treats. <laughs> um, but you've, and have them in, in moderation. Right, right. Um, but daily, you know, in influx of sugar um, is such a, it really, I mean, just one teaspoon of sugar lowers our immune system by like five hours. So, oh, wow. you know, somebody drinking a daily soda or loading up on a latte with tons of caramel sauce in it, um, daily, you're you're really just pummeling your immune system by doing that, and, you're, mm -hmm. and it just lowers your chances of healing mm -hmm. well and um, fighting off infection. So I know um, when you eat uh, fruits and things like that, there's naturally occurring sugars. So mm -hmm. would you say that's you're you're talking more about added sugar, not so much yeah. naturally occurring exactly. sugar? Exactly. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Perfect. Process. Um, yeah. And like I said, nutrition is such a huge, huge topic. Um, is there anything else that you want to touch on or anything that you feel is really important for people to know? Um, you know, I did want to mention just um, about post-op, you know, in terms yeah. of pain management, because it is really, um, there is definitely a time where some people need to be on narcotics for mm -hmm. pain management, which absolutely. is absolutely appropriate. Um, but just knowing um, there are some other things that they can do to support their inflammation. So when it's appropriate, and I don't mean right off the bat, but you know, the, after the first few days of surgery and the bleeding risk is low, um, maybe consider a turmeric supplement. Okay. It can be super helpful, um, curcumin, for lowering inflammation. It's a natural anti-inflammatory. Also, topical bromelain, it's an enzyme that's from pineapple, and you can oh. actually apply it topically. It's really great for bruising and for local tissue inflammation. So post-op, you know, if you're having dealing with a lot of um, swelling and inflammation of the local tissue, which is normal, it's a normal healing process, mm -hmm. but you can put some bromelain on there and that really helps with the local pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, magnesium is a natural muscle relaxant. So yes. since you guys work a lot with joints and such, yes, absolutely. you know, connective tissue, muscles, everything is around those joints, you know, mm -hmm. can spasm and, mm -hmm. and really create pain as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, magnesium being a natural muscle relaxant is amazing to mm -hmm. take post-op mm -hmm. too. So, you know, 400 milligrams a few times a day of magnesium, I would go with glycinate, citrate can really um, loosen the gut, but mm -hmm. if you're a little constipated from those narcotics, then mm -hmm. do mag citrate. Yeah. You know, 400 milligrams a few times a day as a natural muscle relaxant to get mm -hmm. all that connective tissue to calm down a little bit. Perfect. Um, so again, we would recommend, you know, follow up with your healthcare provider, consult with them before taking any supplements to Absolutely. make sure it's appropriate for you. Um, if you have more que questions about nutrition, you can find Michelle Hershey Baker at Inspired Health here in Bend. Um, you can also find her on her social media as well. You're on Instagram. Are you on the Man. Facebook too? No, I deleted Facebook. Yes, Instagram <laughs> only for Michelle. So feel free to reach out to her if you have any other questions as well. And we hope that you have found this to be helpful in all things nutrition because it is such a very, very hot topic, but a very intense topic as well. Absolutely. So, all right. Thank you so much, Michelle. Yeah, thank you.